Hey everyone, Cody from Mac Telecom Networks. Next week, we're going to a job site to install all this Unify equipment, and we're able to make a video of the installation process. In this video, I'm gonna show you what I do to get prepared for the job, and then next week, I'll release the video of the installation. If you'd like to hire me for network consulting, visit www.mactelecomnetworks.com. You'd find us on Instagram at Mac Telecom Networks, and we have a Discord in an Amazon storefront, and I'll put the links in the description below. So first, let's take a look at what gear we're going to be using. Some of it is hidden down below here, so we'll go through all of that. We have one G4 bullet, which is going to be mounted on the outside of the building. And then we have three Unify viewports, which will be around the office behind TVs. We have our Unify Access Starter Kit, and the Access Starter Kit comes with the Unify Access Hub, the Reader Pro, and the Reader Lite, as well as 20 Unify cards. We have a separate Unify Access Reader Lite. We have a G3 Flex Professional Mounting Bracket. We have two Unify Access Hubs, and then we have seven Unify G4 Dome Cameras. In the network room, we're gonna be having the G3 Flex, for Wi-Fi, we're going to be using two Nano HDs, and then we're going to be using the UDM Pro with an 8 terabyte hard drive. For the Switch, we're going to be using a USW24 Pro PoE. That's the equipment list that we're going to be working with. So what I do first, I need to get all of this gear opened, plugged in, and then adopted. And we'll throw some labels on the access points, the Switch, Okay, now we have everything out of the box, we need to get it all plugged in. The access reader hubs need to go in the last eight ports as they require PoE++. So let's get these things powered up. Now everything's out of the box and cabled together. It's not the prettiest, but it's just the temporary solution to get it pre-configured and then we're going to be bringing it to the client site. So let's get the UDM Pro up and running. For now, I'm going to leave the device name as UDM Pro and then we're going to accept the agreements and the end user license and press next. Now we need to sign into our UI account. If you don't have one, you need to create one and I'm going to go ahead and do that. Step three, this is the update schedule. We're going to turn that off and then press next. And then we're going to turn off auto optimization. You could leave it on for your home. I just find that it doesn't work properly. And then we'll press next. Now it's going to start a speed test. Okay, now the speed test is done. We're going to have to redo this and change what they promise us when we bring it to site to get the real ratings of what speeds that site has. And then we'll press next. Now we have to review our information and press finished. We can now see the UDM Pro screen and we can see that the network controller is an older firmware. We're going to want to go into settings and update all of the firmware. So our UDM Pro firmware, our network firmware, and then our protect firmware as we're using the UDM Pro for protect. So we'll go to settings and then I'm going to check for update. Here we see an update available and it's changing from 1.6.8 to 1.93 and we'll press confirm. Now we can see the UDM Pro is updated to 1.93. Let's go ahead and check the other controllers and make sure they're up to date. So our network controller needs an update, so we'll update. And then our protect needs an update as well, so we'll update that. We will be using Unify Access, so we're going to update that controller as well. The network controller is up to date, so is protect, and we need to set up Unify Access. But first, we're going to go and create some networks. So let's click on the Unify Network Controller. I'm going to go back to the classic dashboard. I prefer it. So we'll click on go to classic dashboard. And then on the new user interface, we're going to press deactivate. Before we create the networks, we need to adopt the switch and the two access points into our controllers. I'll click on each one of the devices and press adopt. The switch and the two access points are now adopted into our controller. And I've switched the names for them. So both of our access points are just AP1, AP2. And how you do that, you go to the config wheel of the device and then change the alias. So let's make a couple networks. To make the networks, we need to hit the three little buttons on the bottom and then go to settings. 
we'll click on networks. The first one I'll create is staff and it's going to be corporate and we're going to give it a VLAN 100. The gateway subnet will be 192.168.100.1 slash 24 and then we'll update the DHCP range and then press save changes. We also need to make a network for access and for our cameras. So I'll create new network and we'll call this unify access. It will be corporate VLAN 110 and then gateway of 192.168.110.1 slash 24 and then we'll update the DHCP range and then press save. Now we need to do our cameras. So we'll do unify cameras. It will be corporate and then we'll give it a VLAN ID of 120. The gateway will be 192.168.120.1 slash 24 and then we'll update the DHCP range and press save. For now, that's the only networks I'm going to create. I'm not going to create any Wi-Fi networks as I don't know what the customer wants the SSIDs to be, but they will want a guest network and we'll create that when we're on site. So what we need to do, we need to figure out which ports are camera ports and then we need to give them the specific camera VLAN. So let's take a look at the client tab. Under the client tab, we could see all of our devices that are cameras and then we could click on the port, the switch port and then change the VLAN. So we'll click on switch number one and it's port one. And then we'll hit the edit pencil. I'm going to give this a name of camera one. And then the switch port profile we're going to use is that new Unify camera network and we'll press apply. Sometimes for the cameras to be able to grab an IP, you want to reboot the camera and we could do that by a power cycle right here and then press confirm. So I'm going to speed through the rest of the cameras and then we'll start doing some of the Unify access. Now all the cameras are in the correct VLAN. Let's go over to Unify Protect and then get the cameras adopted. So we'll click here and then we'll just move over to Protect. Now we're in Protect, we need to click on Devices and then press on Add Device. We're able to see all of our G4 Dome in the bullet and all of our viewports. I'll relabel these after but we'll add all devices. And now all of our cameras and our viewports are up. So that's all we're going to do with the cameras. We're going to leave them as is. And when we get to the customers, we're going to point them, direct them, and then put in motion zones if they want. So let's move over to Unify Access. On the front page, it says set up Unify Access. So we'll click set up. And here it will tell us an installation guide. I'm going to agree to the end user license and then we'll press start. Now it says, please check whether the VLAN on the network of access controller is consistent with the VLAN of the Unify access devices. And we'll press OK. The access network isn't going to be our LAN. It's going to be that new Unify access that we set up. And we'll press save. Before we adopt any devices, we need to add location and door group. I'm just going to create a couple door groups and locations for now. And I'll just call them test. And then the door group, we'll call it test as well. And then we'll select the location, which will be test, and we'll press save. Now we need to go down to our devices and then adopt devices. For the first door, I'm going to select test. The second door, I'll select the zone is test and then test one for the door. And then for the third, it will be zone test and then test two and press adopt devices. Now all of the devices are going to adopt and then do firmware upgrades. I'd rather do that here than on the job site as it takes quite a while to get these up and running and updated. And that's the process I go through before bringing the devices to site. I also take note of the MAC address and the serial numbers and put it in a spreadsheet. If you have any questions about this video, please leave it in the comments below. We will be doing the physical install next Friday, July 2nd, 2021. So watch out for this video. If you like this video, please hit the thumbs up button. If you're new here, please subscribe and hit the bell icon. All right, thanks.